Welcome to the CloudGuard introductory network training. In this training, we will assume that some cloud accounts have already been added. A user account or accounts should have already been created by your administrator, or as we refer to them in CloudGuard as super users. This will allow you to log in and begin to review and visualize your network assets in the cloud. You then can review your organization's security posture relative to a single cloud account or multiple cloud accounts. And then you will be able to organize, filter, and later report in a variety of ways. This is the first screen that you see when you log in. It is the dashboard or dashboards. That is, you can create multiple dashboards, customized dashboards, that will allow you to share it with others, export it if need be, but most importantly, be able to drill down on your most important assets for further review. In this sample dashboard, we see we have the ability to also modify to any need those particular widgets. Widgets are added very easily through this wizard. You can categorize those widgets in a few different settings, areas, if you will, and then be able to drill down on that particular widget list and go right to where you need to view and analyze. So the dashboard is helpful for both the new user and the experienced user. For today's session, we're gonna talk about how your account was onboarded, your options while it was onboarded, and see how that is reflected in our network security and visualization tools. As we see here in a list of environments in our demo account, we see a production account that <clears throat> lists some very interesting things in terms of security group settings. This was created through the onboarding process. The onboarding process does start in the environment area, specifically in this example, we'll focus in on AWS accounts. You can do similar in Azure and GCP as well. But here we see this onboarding process presents you with two different ways to onboard accounts. In read-only mode and full protection or read-write mode. In monitor mode, CloudGuard is the visualization, monitoring, auditing, and reporting tool that you can use to better understand your security posture in this AWS account. And it's done with a simple policy document. In full protection or read-write mode, we gain additional features, including dynamic access leasing, a time-limited on-demand resource access tool that gives a IP address, very specific access to a resource in your AWS cloud for a finite period of time. It also allows you to control, manage your security groups in one place in this central console. It also allows you to apply tamper protection and region lock for active enforcement. These three main features we will review today. But again, it is just done with a simple policy document. This policy document listed as Dome 9 Read Only, that's our previous name, we refer to as Cloud Guard or Cloud Guard Dome 9 now. But in this read write full protection mode, we have another document that we ask for rights to that allows CloudGuard to be the security authority for all your security group adds, removes, changes. That is how this environment selection 
allows us to leverage, in this case, full protection, read right. And as we go down these multiple regions within this AWS account, we do see some region lock being deployed. If we take a look at that, we see there's only one security group, but there could have been multiple. And it is showing us in this region lock that newly detected security groups will be imported and will immediately have their rules clear, deleted in both ingress and egress. This is a mode that is highly recommended for inactive regions. But with this full protection mode, we have lots of options in which to control those security groups that will be attached to many different types of assets. In the security group category right here, we see another region where there is a hybrid. That is, some are in read only, and others in this darker or black color is just read. But because this is in full protection mode, we have the ability to migrate those security groups, the new firewalls within AWS, from full to read and back again. We could select all and very quickly, if there's many security groups, you can make that change very quickly and hit save. But that gives us the options to not only just visualize, review your inventory, but also make changes if warranted. In read-only mode, we are just the reporter, if you will, monitoring, auditing, visualizing, but but in most cases, you want to either start in full protection mode or migrate to full protection mode soon. This feature allows us to drill down on those protected assets and make some changes if needed. <clears throat> With protected asset view, we see the ability to Initially, if I clear this filter, see all those assets, regardless of cloud environment, in one screen. I could search on it if I knew the name or more easily choose that platform, choose that environment, choose that asset type. and begin to focus in on this particular area of concern. <clears throat> the darker or gray color is an EC2 instance that stopped. The brighter or orange color is something that is running. And during this review inventory process, we're beginning to find out some valuable information relative to this instance as an example. We see there are security group policies applied. We can see the NACL policies, both inbound and outbound. <clears throat> we have an entity viewer that lists all the variables with respect to this instance type. And with our posture management and compliance rule sets, we'll be able to query and focus in on the details of this particular instance. We can get general properties as well. We can also query on the tags. As you know, tagging is very important. Once your cloud accounts begin to grow and give you the ability to understand exactly who created it, what's the naming convention, what its purpose is, et cetera. So, for this first pass, we are just reviewing those assets, trying to understand the, the volume of them, how they're configured, and we have the ability to simply export them 
to a simple CSV file, or even in more detail by an asset type, which will allow you to create a detailed report that will be emailed to your in basket in your email system. And then you can download a compressed file and get even further details on a particular asset type. So here again, in the protected asset view, we are beginning to understand the nature and the number of assets related to this particular account. We can save that filter as well in a very generic way and save it with others. You'll see this term public. That is publicly within your account that you can let others know about this filter. They can certainly use the drop down there and select it themselves. There's another organizational tool within assets called organizational units. This allows you to group like accounts for better filtering, but also for users and roles that can create specific groups of users who can only see their AWS accounts or Azure accounts or GCP accounts or all the above or a combination thereof. So organizational units from a filtering, inventory gathering, and reporting is a valuable tool as you add more accounts to your CloudGuard account. So it all came from adding an AWS account or accounts, reviewing those assets, and now we need to certainly look at those in a bit more detail through our network security. And we can do that with this configuration explorer and choose that account, choose a particular region and look at VPCs as represented in these nodes, completely uh, able to scroll, zoom up, zoom down, look at the connectivity between those VPCs and the larger nodes contain more assets, of course. There is even a, a legend down here that tells you a little bit more about those. Scrolling up, down, searching, uh, looking at other regions as well. But for this training, we will look at a demo VPC and be able to drill down upon it and look at this as listed above, account, region, VPC, and literally walk the traffic from outside to inside in these swim lanes. Listed as external, DMZ, partial, internal, and internal IP. The security group view and placement is based on those inbound and outbound rules listed as we're gonna scroll up here a little bit in these security group views. And it will allow you to drill down, if you will, it's gonna scroll up here and look at that security group and see what assets it is attached to. This is very important to understand exactly where and how access is given. Yes, I can get right back um, to the original view. I can look at it from a external or initial view. There is also an asset view that groups these views by its, uh, its asset type. For this training, we'll focus in on the security group view, but we'll take a quick look at the asset view, showing this, uh, the interconnectivity between that and the number as common security group has 
connections to two different types of assets that we can drill down on. We can go back to that security group view and now understand and literally, as mentioned, walk the traffic from outside to inside. So we have a classification tool here on the left that will uh, first show the external. Those are just external IP addresses to the DMZ. DMZ means that these security groups have a rule or rules wide open to the internet, something that we might want to take a closer look at to in, internal, to implicitly, and reset it to its original one, including adding the partial view here that says you do, that is, this security group does have access, but it's only to a partial or finite group of IP addresses. So with this information now, we can begin to take a closer look at perhaps some of these security group views and see how they're configured in the security group view that looks a lot like the protected asset view, meaning you can filter, you can uh, export, as we'll see, and look in a more detailed way, including change history, as we see here, what they're attached to. And because we set this account in full protection mode, we have the additional feature to not just review this security profile, but actually make a change if warranted. And this SSH port, that is port 22, is wide open. Because it's in full protection mode, I could delete the whole rule, but there may be a legitimate reason why this security group is covered. And we do see a, a group description up here. It's very important to get that general property information. But we can make a decision now based on what we've seen in Clarity. Clarity has presented us a particular security profile that we need to make a modification to. We could add a partially <laughs> set of IP or DNS name. We could add a IP list. This is a CloudGuard feature list that allows you to add uh, some managed lists that CloudGuard has created. But in this case, since we don't know the true security needs of that set of assets, we just want to limit all traffic, save that out, go back to the configuration explorer. And during this time, we are certainly noting that in our audit log and our audit trail, if you will. And that security group view will be represented in a different location. As mentioned, as I'm going to scroll up here, uh, we see this database server security group now only accessed internally, not partially, as in some access to internet IP addresses, not wide open as it was before. So as we can see, this visualization tool very quickly allows you to find, you can share this information, you could do a snapshot to it. If you were just in read-only mode and you were concerned with this security profile. You can also go back to that security group view, collect that information as we see here in the generic security group view. Again, looks like the protected asset view. You can search, you can create a filter on that. You can do general searches on security group names. Default security group quite often is a security group that's not used and you want to deploy it, rename it, or delete it. That same saved filter option can be listed in this security group view. 
And like the DB server group view, I can drill down on that security group view. Take a look at it. And again, this is a security group that's in full protection, read write mode. I have, that is, this user within CloudGuard has the ability to make a change on that as well. So we have very quickly looked at a main dashboard, drilled down on some protected assets, looked at the security groups that are attached to those assets. We visualized it. We noted a security issue and made a change all in full protection mode. If it was just inventory review, we have the ability to like protected assets to export it very quickly to a CSV file or leveraging those OUs that we saw in the asset view options. We can select a particular account within a group of uh, cloud environments and have that emailed to this logged in user that will provide a download link that you can download and get even more details and share for people who do not log into CloudGuard on a regular basis. So Traffic Explorer, specifically Clarity, allows you to do all these things and make secure profile decisions. It also allows you to look at those security groups and look at something called a VPC flow log, which is an option during onboarding that allows you to take a look at traffic in real time and find out if it's accepted or rejected. Um, interesting traffic, port one, two, three, that's the time protocol is being accepted. Uh, many other port traffic is being rejected. And like lots of our features, you can always export this information for further review or to show others within your group. That is all under network security. We have that coll collapsible menu that allows you to expand your screen. But when we onboarded that sample account, there was something called dynamic access leases. Dynamic access leases allows a person or group to gain very specific access, a very specific port to a very specific security group that is attached to a particular asset type, much like we saw before. This can be granted to yourself based on your user and role permissioning for a finite period of time. As always, monitor that for multiple users and know that it will expire and you as a super user can terminate that lease at any time. For contractors, for our many now remote users, this is a valuable tool to give them very specific access. You don't have to deploy a VPN. There is no agent in anything that we've talked about so far. This is agentless. It is not a client that needs to be installed. If we're leveraging that read-write security group option that we use when we onboard it. So this is a, a very usable, valuable tool. Again, all because we went to full management or read write when we onboarded. But we also pointed out you can migrate from read to full management very quickly as well. So I did mention through adding that account, looking at our assets, looking at network security options via Configuration Explorer, meaning Clarity, and the security groups that are attached to it, that this was all being recorded. And it certainly is in our events. Events contains now 
under this new menu system, all our alerts based on posture management that is covered in a, another training module. But for today, we want to look at the audit logs, specifically those security group changes, whether in read write mode or read where we're just monitoring, they are collected. They are exportable, like much of our menu selection options. I can scroll to that account type and see uh, everything related to cloud security groups. I can do it on a particular time frame as well. Just a security group change detected or more importantly, security group tamper protection. As mentioned in that read write or full management mode, CloudGuard can monitor, flag, log, and revert back to the standard that was created within this solution. And it's clearly listed here and can be exported just as it is or further filter on that particular issue. If I was in monitor mode, a little hard to read here, you could just look at it as it was created or updated. But we're really concerned with detected and handled. As an example, a cloud account has moved from development to production, and I wanna make sure that my configuration is being set and held, and now I can export that and share it with others. It'll be a simple CSV file that goes to your uh, default download directory. This is, uh, again, using and leveraging that full management or protection mode. For users, that is new users, is part of this training. You want to make sure that your users and roles make sense based on those organizational units, based on what those users in your group will want to use. And that role option that we talked about in organizational units can be deployed here. Looking at those roles, being a again, to export that list for further review. But certainly, we can take a role and apply that to those OUs. You can give that role the ability to uh, create security groups. You can give that role uh, a very important one relative to managing the resources. Organizational units is the, a very effective way to create users, put them in a particular role, and they only have access to that organizational unit that contains those accounts. So that will allow whether new or existing users, when they log into this dashboard, will give them the ability to very quickly Create a custom dashboard as listed below here on the left. That will show exactly what is needed. And there are a variety of dashboards here that you can quickly drill down into what, it, again, what is your focus. It might be a platform, it might be a region, it might be a VPC. Uh, you have lots of options here. And then to look at it through visualization, record it, or make changes. This concludes the introductory network training.